I have another question. What is EU methodology in respect to life impact in respect to cost and carbon emission and climate impact of any infrastructure system and how are those considered? Could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is, or maybe we could, we could ask the person who have uh, sent that question to uh, ask the question orally. Maybe that would make the uh, dialogue easier. It comes from Hermann Falk. Maybe can you please uh, raise your question? Yeah, good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, the question was in respect to if, if we discuss any infrastructure system, and I, I'm referring to the presentation of Jim Mack, where he compared concrete and asphalt, and he was, uh, let's say, considering concluding that concrete pavements over the lifespan of a system are more, let's say, economic and as well more climate, uh, um, how to say, friendly compared to asphalt. And how is that considered in your view and evaluation and requirements to any future infrastructure? I, I, I can answer how we're starting to look at it at the, the, in the US methodology, if, if that's what you're looking at. And so and let me go there and then I'll hand it over to Klaus. Um, essentially, what we're doing in the US is in, in like, we want to add this to a, a part of our life cycle, a, a life cycle cost analysis. And so we're going to add a risk analysis where we look at what's the risk of a, an event happening. And then, so what's the probability of that event happening? And then if it does happen, what is the financial cost associated with that happening? And from that probability of the risk happening and what is the cost of that risk happening? And we can look at high, you know, high events, low events, different types of events, we can come up with a, a cost associated with the mitigation techniques of, of the different things and what those are. So we, we can look at flooding. And so when we, for example, when we're looking at flooding, we, we actually can model the performance of the different payments based on different moisture conditions. We can look at the damage in the future and we can model that and say, hey, there's very little damage, so there's not a whole bunch of extra cost, or there's a lot of damage, and so there's going to be a whole bunch of extra cost, and we put that into our analysis procedure in the evaluation process. So it's a it's a risk-based analysis, and so that's how we've been, our, our U.S. Congress has, def, def, has told us that we need to use risk-based analysis in our evaluations of our payment systems, and that's the process we're, we're working at implementing. And the question was was more or less addressed to European Commission. And the yeah. question is, do we have this kind of same, how to say, a precast uh, methods to, to look into different infrastructure systems to evaluate, OK, it's cheaper to install, it's less carbon to install, but on the long term, the other system uh, would be more, let's say, competitive and even more friendly to cost and as well to carbon emission or climate. I can put it differently. The guidance is asking that the project developer will have the usual technical team, engineers, economists, to, to prepare the project. And added to that team should be the climate expertise. So that the typical team that the project developer will use, the engineers, etc., also include climate expertise. Um, the guidance is covering all kinds of infrastructure that you could fund with EU funding in this period, 21 to 27, but it's not specific, it's not comparing asphalt with concrete payments. Okay. That's up to the project developer who might be the national administration of roads. Yeah. Okay. They would develop yeah. it further, just like James is explaining in the US. Then just, uh, we, I think we have the same approach for the climate resilience, and that is a risk-based approach. Yeah, and that 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 that's what I say. We're applying the same process to both carbon and cost, and doing that. And and again, it, it's a it's an infrastructure thing. We, we've we've pulled this process. This is how they evaluate buildings here in the U.S. and the and the whole resiliency around buildings is much more advanced in the U.S. than the, than the infrastructure. And we're trying to apply those same type of concepts to the pavements. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Stefan, I think that you have a last question. We need to go to the uh, yeah. end session uh, yes. of this event, so okay. please be quick if you can. I have a last question uh, that linked to the one that was just asked. Um, so I understand, I mean, the, the, the type of payment is not your, um, your, your, your concern, or it's, it's more up to the development teams to look into these topics. Um, uh, clear, uh, but um, is there a way, or, or or do you think you will um, put emphasis, you know, on checking that actually the available solutions uh, have been compared and evaluated in order to pick the best one? Because, uh, yeah, I mean, we are confronted to the issue in some countries that actually they don't look at. The, the the alternative that exists and in order to best to, to get the best outcome for for European Union and for sustainability uh, in general uh, it would make sense that the the pot potential alternatives be compared so that the best solution would be used eventually not just to use a good solution but to look for the best and compare the alternative and and yeah so and this is not a technical, you know, analysis that is needed. It's just to see, okay, have they compared alternative or they just uh, propose only one? So, and it would be very, very valuable um, to us that if this type of um, checks were done, you know, in in when you approve um, uh, this uh, detailed analysis. But that detailed analysis. For example, if the EU is funding road projects in a member state, you would expect the National Roads Administration to do that type of analysis to find the optimal solutions for their infrastructure. And it's not at that level of detail that the guidance is going in into. But the guidance is obliging the, the assessment of the greenhouse gas emissions and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to look at climate resilience which is a step forward in, in the European context for some of the member states. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Kundrup. Um, then we go to the part of uh, debate and uh, I would like to um, ask a very first question to all our speakers. Uh, what are, according to you, the main challenges to be addressed and or the main obstacles that need to be overcome when we talk about resilience, uh, climate resilience and more particularly of uh, long term transport investment. And in our case, we obviously focus on the uh, road infrastructure. So who wants to start? I, I can start with that. Um, I, I think that here in the U.S., our biggest obstacle is addressing what Stefan, Stefan just, just talked about, having people look at alternative solutions and ways to do things. A, a lot of the practice is more justification of what I've been doing and maybe looking at things and tweaking to, to get a little bit better performance. It's not a wholesale, let's look at our whole process and change fundamentally how we approach infrastructure. We still see it as a pavements, as a piecemeal type thing. And so I think our, our biggest uh, roadblock is getting people to look at different alternatives and comparing those and putting there. I think we have the technical aspects of it. I, I think the U.S., leads in some ways because they have some good technical aspects of how to evaluate payments and do stuff. I think the Europeans lead in a lot of ways with the standards and the technical guidance and, and you know, kind of laying all that out. We need a merger of those two systems so that we can do the evaluation in, in a much more comprehensive way and have those done. I think, like I say, I think the Europeans lay out how it needs to be done. We just need to uh, actually force those types of evaluations to be done. Okay, quite quite interesting. This uh, approach of merging two different 
uh, approach or behaviors. I think it's uh, uh, it's really interesting to see uh, that a combination of both uh, could really uh, bring uh, some uh, benefits. Another uh, reaction to that question from uh, Mr. Kondrup or Luke? Yeah, if I can make one, I think time yeah. is, is, is important, uh, but it's about the time horizon because I imagine that for the payment, it lasts 10, 15 years and then you have to replace it. So you have some, a, one set of decisions for the payment and what you would put as an extra payment after 10, 15 years. But for infrastructure, we also have longer lasting decisions to make, like the height of a bridge. And there we have to deal with the uncertainty because it's easier for us to estimate the extremes we will have the next 10, 15 years than what we will have in 30 to 50 years. So the time horizon for the different aspects of the infrastructure, I think is important. See, see, yeah, it, I, and I think this is where it is. We are actually looking at 75 years for the pavements, even in the US. So that we're looking at those long time time frames also, and that's an important aspect. So we recognize, like you said, the bridges need to be part of that discussions, but the pavements, and then how we do that from a probabilistic or a uncertainty principles take those into account. Those are where we're working at. And that's, I think, some of the portions where I think the U.S. is maybe a little bit higher, but I think the standards were in, to the evaluation process is where Europe's better. So, yeah, I think it's yep. uh, quite interesting to have this uh, uh, criteria of the life cycle. Uh, we are talking about uh, infrastructure. The roads uh, themselves are have different components that also have um, different life cycles and uh, momentums and uh, also the um, let's say another element which is the road users the different types of road users also bring different uh, other di criteria as well of uh, life cycle duration uh, which need to be uh, to be taken into consideration so yeah uh, Luke do you have any remark on the that question well yes it's it's precisely the misunderstanding uh, for, um, that we are advocating indeed for uh, also a long term vision and, and long uh, service lives for pavement, which is possible with concrete. And then the challenge is indeed to, to convince decision makers of taking the, yeah, the good decision of a future proof solution. Uh, <clears throat> requiring a higher initial investment. Uh, and so it, it is investing for the future, yeah, in terms of cost, in terms of uh, resilience, and, and that will remain a challenge for concrete pavements. Okay. And as we, we talk, I will just get to the last question, but as we talk about investment and money, um, a question related to the investment. Have there been any term investigation in terms of return on the investment for making transport infrastructure and more particularly uh, making pavement more resilient. Do we have any data? I know this is always a, a, a very difficult uh, discussion. Um, uh, is there any way to quantify or to uh, to, to get more uh, accurate uh, details about the return on investment? Um, anybody want to go first or I can go? Well, I already said something at the end of my presentation about the public private yeah. partnerships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it is the, 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 the whole group, the consortium, which designs and, and operates for a project of purpose life. And so they are in charge, they are responsible and that will make it easier for them to make the right choices the, the, on the long term. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, one, one of the things we've seen here in the US is a group called AASHTO. It's the state DOTs, it's their associations. The AASHTO, FHWA and a few other groups have looked at how to build in resiliency. And so they, you know, they talk about prevention, protection, mitigating, response and then recovery. And what they have found out is, the, and they haven't looked specifically at pavement, but they've looked at all other types of infrastructure type things. 
and they found that when you do things that do prevention or protection or mitigating, the return on investment is somewhere between two to nine times uh, every dollar you spend. So it's a two to one to a nine to one, depending on what you're looking at. Once you get into responding and recovering, it's a major negative and you know re ROI. So at that point, the, the, that's why AASHTO and the FHWA is really pushing, hey, focus on the mitigation and the protection of the system and trying to build out of it before it actually happens. Okay, that's uh, quite a, an interesting um, information, really. And uh, it goes into the uh, definitely into the sense of the, uh, the long term uh, investment in transport infrastructure. Uh, thank you very much. I think that we are now progressively going to the uh, end of this quite interesting event. Um, and uh, before finishing this session, I would like to give again the floor to uh, Stefan uh, for the final conclusions and the closing remarks. Uh, thank you, Christoph. I try to be short. Um, so I think uh, it's clear after our discussion today that it's worth investing today, not tomorrow, in road resilience. The social benefits uh, will be saving people's lives and protecting economies. It's also clear, uh, I think, uh, that concrete can be a uh, part of the solution, a big part of the solution, as concrete roads show better resilience. In the case of flooding, because of its stiffness, like uh, Mr. Jim Mack uh, made a very clear case. It's also clear that the European Commission's technical guidance on the climate proofing infrastructure will be a powerful instrument to help the EU member states to mitigate and adapt infra infrastructure to climate change. And our dear wish is that it finally leads member states project owners to compare alternative techniques and type of payments in an open manner to select the best uh, options uh, to achieve the best possible outcome for the society and the environment. Um, this said, yeah, I would uh, finally would like to say that um, uh, the European um, Parliament, the European Commission, as well as other administration will always find a friend in UPA. We are and will always be willing to collaborate, discuss and help implement it uh, implementing all the policy which protect environments and bring more resilience and innovative infrastructure. Uh, so that, uh, yeah, it helps us to all have a brighter and more sustainable future. So with this, I would like to thank uh, everyone for coming and participating in this uh, important debate. Uh, thank you a lot, Mr. Klaus Kondrup, for giving your expertise from the Commission uh, in this debate. Thank you, Mr. Jim Mack, for sharing uh, with us uh, the, the approach uh, in the US uh, on this uh, topic of resilience. And, uh, and thank you, Mr. Nicodem, for your presence and contributing uh, contribution to moderate uh, the debate. So thanks a lot. And uh, I hope to see you uh, soon uh, uh, again. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. Um, I would like to give um, great thanks to uh, our host today, Ms. Isabel uh, Garcia Munoz, to uh, UPAVE, the organizer, um, to all the speakers uh, and to all the participants. And before uh, leaving you, I would leave maybe Elise uh, give you some uh, practical information regarding the availability of the presentations and the recording of the event. Thank you again very much for your participation and have a nice evening. And on my behalf, sorry, I had forgotten to thank Mrs. Isabel Garcia so, and her team. Sorry about that. And, and thanks a lot, of course, for hosting the event. Thank you, Christoph. Yes, so the presentation and the recording will be made available on the website. I will also send it by email to, the, to those who registered. So if you are participating, but you didn't register before, you can email me. Um, my email address yes, is on the screen. Uh, just yes, give me your contact details and I will send you the information.